further our comparison, we should consider the part complexity. For example, if you look at this NASA 3D printed rocket part, it's in steel, not plastic. And would it be possible to machine it? It would, but with great difficulty. Could it be made with investment casting? Yes, but again, it'd be very time consuming. Any hidden features which are not accessible by a cutting tool can be made by 3D printing. This is because 3D printing makes objects layer by layer. So any features which are supposed to be concealed can be easily 3D printed. The complexity of a printed part depends in part on the capabilities of the printer. Just because a 3D printer has high resolution in the printer specification doesn't mean your 3D printed parts will be accurate or precise. Accuracy is how close to a measurement its true value is. In the case of a target, true value is the bullseye. The closer you are to hitting the bullseye, the more accurate your shot. In the world of 3D printing, true value equals the dimensions you design in CAD. How closely does the 3D print line up to the digital design? Precision measures the repeatability of a measurement. How consistent your shots are to the target. Precision measures the consistency only. Your shots could be hitting near the same spot every time, but that spot doesn't have to be the bullseye. In 3D printing, this ultimately translates into reliability. Can you rely on your machine to produce your expected results for every print? As with all manufacturing methods, we would like our method to be accurate and precise. Tolerance determines how precise you need to be. The tolerance is defined by the designer. How much wiggle room do you have for your application? What's an acceptable tolerance or variation in the size? The actual tolerance will depend on your project application. A component with a dynamic mechanical assembly will require light tolerances when compared to a simple plastic enclosure. With respect to ease of use, most 3D printers are fairly easy to use with only minimal training except for metal. Most of the training is spent on using the most of the training is spent on using the slicing software and fill options, again, except for metal. All 3D printers will require some post processing. FDM typically requires manual or in a caustic bath to remove the support material. And these parts are often sanded and painted if required. MJ, Polyjet, and DOD require manual post processing or with a pressure washer to remove the wax light support. SLA, DLP, MSLA can typically have the supports manually removed and then excess material is cleaned from the uncured part in a solvent bath. Then the part will be cured in UV light to harden it. SLS requires removal of excess uncured power and the part to be washed and sealed. And sometimes these parts are cured or have the surface hardened. EMLS and EBM require heat treatment and to be cut off from the metal support, as well as extensive deburring and grinding, where binder jetting requires the part to be cured, as well as the removal of excess powder and to apply an infiltrant to seal surface material. The maintenance processes will vary depending on the type of printer. With FDN units, the print platform needs to be cleaned and maintained. Before each print, the nozzle needs to be preheated and a small amount of material extruded out as waste. Often, while the nozzle is still hot, a steel brush is used to clean it up and keep the excess filament off. The print beds need to be heated and the machine might need to be re-leveled from time to time. All printers will need to keep the firmware updated from time to time. It's important to make sure you have the right filament for your job. When different colors are required in the same print job and the machine only has one print head, it'll be necessary to pause the project swap out the filament and resume printing. It's often wise to keep a small toolkit beside the printer so that maintenance can be done as needed. An FDM often requires a gentle sanding to remove any remaining filaments as well as acetone can be used to give the object a smooth finish and improve the surface bonds. Routine maintenance at the end of every print job will always keep your printer in good shape and ready for the next print job. Regular maintenance will help the machine last longer. Remove all stray bits so that they do not fall into the moving parts and cause trouble. Keep all fasteners snug and check them regularly. Move the axis on a regular basis and make sure they're well lubricated. And it's always good maintenance advice to keep things clean, neat, and tidy.
High-end industrial machines will require a regular production maintenance schedule to recalibrate, lubricate, and keep the unit clean. This is often purchased from the manufacturer or reseller.